Hey guys, I just finished this uh, blower motor repair. Had a, a couple of quick words I wanted to say before we started. Uh, made some mistakes along the way in the uh, troubleshooting of the of the uh, motor. Um, basically, when it came down to the wiring diagram, they either gave me the wrong one or the previous previous owner had changed the harness, which is probably more likely of the two, and uh, switched some things around. So. Um, if you pay attention then you won't have to make all these mistakes and have all this time into it also there's a, a couple of mystery items i encountered along the way that were pretty critical to the whole thing so we figured that out and uh if you have one of these trucks you'll have those those same two mystery items so pay attention there that'll save you a ton of time and frustration trying to figure that out and in the end here i'm going to show you how to reset this hvac uh, blower motor and control panel here by yourself without paying somebody to do it which is, uh, you know, always something good to know. And uh, sorry if the video gets a little long, but I hopefully uh, think there's some something educational all the way through it. And uh, hopefully uh, by me making these mistakes and, and showing you my mistakes, then you won't have to make them. So anyway, let's get into it. First thing you might as well do anytime you have a problem like this, Check your fuse. So on these freight liners, just push in there, lift up, set that aside. <clears throat> now, on this one, it's this big yellow fuse right there. It says HVAC, HVAC. That'll be for your blower motor. There'll also be one for the sleeper, but it'll say HVAC sleeper. I already checked it. It's good. No problems there. So. To take this dash apart, this section of dash, first you got to lift this cover off the fuse box. Then you got to pop this piece off here. You can pry it off with a screwdriver, but better way to do it, the less damage is. Once you have the fuse panel off, you can stick your finger through here or over here and just pop it off. Then you don't run the risk of breaking your dash panel. Then there's four screws that hold this piece on. That one up here, here, then two down below on either side. Okay, so keep your screws together there so you don't lose them. Here's what the inside looks like. When we did that air filter video, I talked about a fresh air filter in here. Here it is right here. This is a good opportunity to, to change that. I'm going to show you a really, really cheap way to do it. And, uh, I mean, there's no sense in even blowing it out for, for what it costs to replace that thing. So but we'll get to that later. So right below that here, this is where your blower motor sits. Okay. I can see the plug back in there. We'll get to that in a second. Some of your trucks are going to have an external resistor. External resistor is kind of what controls the power flow to it. So when you turn your fan from low, medium, high, it supplies power accordingly to make the fan run faster or slower in a, in a roundabout way here. Um, this one has an internal resistor. So, well, let's back up here a second. And this is in our way. This is a, a vent for air. To come from the air conditioning whatever down to your feet here there's a screw here and there's one up in here if we can do this without completely removing this pipe here we're gonna do that because um, I don't want to have to remove this whole section of the panel I'm trying to piece something back together. So we're going to try it this way. Usually the less you have to take apart the better. So we'll give it a whirl, see what happens. Um, going to, well, let me get my flashlight here. Okay. I'm going to tip the camera for a second, show you this plug. Point with my screwdriver here. Right here, there's a plug. Okay. 
You need to unplug that. So I'm gonna get my hands in there. I'm back up for a second here. There's the tab, you just pry the tab and push. There we have it. Okay, now there's a couple different things that can happen here. Your blower motor can go out, which is I'm pretty sure what happened here. Or sometimes your blower motor will work just in one or two speeds and not the other ones. That would be a, most likely a bad resistor. But in order to know for now that it's a blower motor, not something else, we need to <clears throat> check and make sure we have power to this here. Let's see. It's a multimeter here. See if you can keep an eye on that screen. <clears throat> Gosh dang, I gotta hire me a full-time cameraman here. There we go. So let's see, I think this is our power right here. And ground would probably be here. Okay, we got five volts. Yeah, I can't see my switch here to know what I, setting I got on. Anyway, that's a good power reference here. That means we have power to the resistor, to the fan. This one has an internal resistor, so if it's bad, we just replace the whole shooting match here, unfortunately. Um, maybe when we get it out, we'll take that apart and I'll show you what the inside looks like. Usually, I'm guessing, due to the general condition of other things on this truck, there's a lot of rust and corrosion inside there. So we're not even going to mess with that, but <clears throat> maybe we can take it apart and see. Fan doesn't work in any position, so... I'm quite confident it's this fan here. So let's get her out of here if we can. Hopefully we can do it without removing that pipe there. I think we can. Man, the suckers are in there tight. <clears throat> I guess I should have taken these back ones out first. Then I wouldn't have to worry about this fan falling on me like this, but it's okay. We got her. There we have it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your blower motor. That's what turn and, turns and blows the air around. Your heat, your air conditioning, everything else. Well, maybe we'll take this uh, apart here and take a look in there. We just got two screws. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. It's just uh, two screws to open this up and then a tab on each side. But... Uh, well, how much you can see here see all let me get my pointer here see these contacts here all that green corrosion yeah that's a good possibility part of the problem and we got just a kind of like a coating of rust and corrosion on everything here's some more green contacts um yeah so it doesn't even pay usually any time to mess with these you just replace the whole thing um you'd have more money probably into buying any of this than than uh just replacing the whole thing it's kind of one of those things of changing parts sometimes it just makes more sense and this could be original it's original since i had the truck at 300,000 miles now we're at 800,000 miles so they only last so long so we are going to have to run and get this part. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Maybe I did mention it. Uh, can't remember. But when you're checking the voltage over here, you need to have the key in the on position so that you're supplying power over there. And uh, yeah, so other than that, I think I covered everything. We're going to take this bad boy with us to the parts house and compare it to what they give me. All right, guys, I'm back from the parts store. We got our new fan here, identical to the old one. So we're getting ready to put that baby on up in there. <clears throat> Hopefully it goes well. It goes just as well as uh, it did taking it out.
Oops. A lot of wires here. Just got to make sure you don't pinch any of them. Perfect fit. Voila! We are in there, folks. Now I'm going to try and fish this plug back up in there. Get my flashlight in there again. Here. Oh yeah. So, here's where we're at. We got the new fan in, and we got it plugged in. We still got to hook this pipe up, but let's not do that until I turn this on and see if the fan works. So, I'll get the camera close here. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear the sound of the fan running. So, I'm going to run around the other side of the truck here and uh, turn that on. What you heard there was the sound of failure. All right, folks, we're back. Um, where we left off yesterday, now this is the next morning from what I was videotaping before, is we put the mower, motor back in, turned it on and it didn't work. And I said, oh crap, we obviously have another problem. So we had to dig way deeper into this thing. And uh, I'm going to do an explanation here of everything I did. Tell you what worked, what didn't, and why. Because uh, if I'd have taken this to the dealer, yes, they would have figured it out. Probably way faster than me. But it still would have cost me a ton of money. So where we're at is... This is the plug, okay? Now I got a wiring diagram for this. Right here, I'm gonna show it to you. Right there, it says blower motor. The bottom wire says voltage battery and ground. Then it says feedback signal, speed control signal. So, the voltage battery terminal is supposed to be this one right here. According to my wiring diagram, I disregarded what the wires were went by the di diagram from Freightliner so they emailed it to me and then gr we should have a ground and then over here we should have uh, the feedback signal which is the wire that goes from the uh, control on the blower back to the control box okay and then this is our I don't know, call it whatever our stepper thing where it steps up the voltage to control the speed of the fan so we had remember if we had five volts over here so this is probably my mistake i took for granted that how it works is you got a constant five volts and then over here it steps up the voltage when you turn the dial to increase the speed of the fan and both of these were working um I tested this when I when I turned the dial on the speed, the speed of the fan, it did step up the voltage. So I'm like, cool, that's how it's supposed to work. The diagram's good, everything, the ground worked. You won't get anything off this feedback wire. You just won't. It, it, uh, it comes out of the box and back to the control panel. All you could really do is find the other end of it in the back of the control panel and test the ohms to see if you have resistance. But didn't think we needed to go there quite yet. Something just wasn't right. So, we go to the fuse panel. Or as Freightliner calls it, the PDM. Okay. Here we got, this is our relay. You can see down there it says HVAC. HVAC 20 amp fuse right here. Now, these are the only two fuses in my fuse panel that say anything about HVAC. Okay, there's for the sleeper. But we'll come back to that later. The sleeper, I don't care about. The, the motor doesn't work back there, but I don't care. I don't need it. I have a tri-pack APU. So, got on the horn to my friend, who's an old electrical, well, not necessarily an engineer, but used to build electrical machinery. 
and he taught me how to troubleshoot this relay. So there's 87 here is the power coming in. When the relay engages, it should send power to 30 here down to your motor. But we weren't getting the power transfer across this relay. So we knew the relay was bad. Okay, so I went to Freightliner again a second time, 60 miles one way. Picked up a relay. I picked up some extras because I got a few different relays here that use that same number relay. So then I have a couple extra on hand. They were $7.50 a piece. Okay, so we put the new relay in, tested it. I got voltage. We're, we're all good. So I come back down to <clears throat> here. Nothing really changed. Um, so getting desperate here, trying to get proper voltage to this fan. So once I replaced the relay, plugged it in, the fan still didn't work. Oh crap. So I talked to Freightliner, they said, no, you should have 12 volts to the power supply. Now the power supply is supposed to be this one. So I spliced the wire, made me a jumper wire here, and ran 12 volts direct from a 12 volt source up here to the plug with the plug plugged in so all the other parameters of the fan are plugged in and I had the 12 volt supply right there doggone fan still did not work so I'm like well shoot oh and mind you that 20 amp fuse was good I did check that so now I'm really puzzled and it's 10 o'clock at night and I just kind of gave up on it last night if I had a videotaped this whole thing, this video would be hours long. I got a lot of time into this. Then I went tracing wires back into the dash, pulled the control panel, all that, everything. Okay, so control panel, the Freightliner saying, well, your control panel is probably bad. Well, everything worked on the control panel because I could measure it over here. When I would turn the fan speed, it would step up the voltage. When I would turn from like your feet to defrost, the stepper motor would would turn, so I knew that that was giving the proper instructions. When I would hit AC or recirculate, the lights would come on. I could run the thing through a reset. Oh, and I'll show you later how to do a reset on this HVAC system. It's really easy. And occasionally, if you have some hiccups, that's the first thing I always try. Reset the system. We'll come back to that later. According to everything I could measure, that control panel was working properly. Now granted, I can't measure everything. I get that. But it just wasn't making sense. And there was nothing I could do to get 12 volts down here to this doggone plug. The reason I cut the wires is because I wanted to make sure it wasn't, you know, I was going to start pulling this plug apart to see if there was a problem inside the plug. But I had no corrosion here or nothing, so I stopped short of doing that. And I went looking for <clears throat> another problem and I'm just like you know I should have 12 volts so I just yanked every fuse in here even the ones that were labeled and what do I come across let me get my pointer here right down here there's a 5 amp and a 30 amp fuse that are not labeled so I pulled them out sure enough the 30 amp was blown so apparently now I'll step back so you can see the general orientation it's in the front left hand corner of the fuse box there's a 30 amp and a 5 amp fuse that are unlabeled so the 30 amp <coughs> voila is in fact the power supply to this plug now I mentioned that I got this diagram specific to my truck so either the diagram is wrong, or my truck is wired wrong. It's probably the truck because this is a glider kit I got. I bought from Schneider. Word of wisdom, don't ever do that. I've had so many problems with this truck. They built it with used parts. I've got a ton of money into fixing this thing. The real power wire is this orange one right here. That's supposed to be your 12 volt. According to the diagram, it's supposed to be this blue and orange one. But it's not. As soon as I replace that fuse, I got 12 volts right here. Right in the hole with that orange wire. 
So, I plugged the, having 12 volts, now I plug this into the blower motor and she works flawlessly. Everything works as it should. So, that's everything I learned. I gotta give a big thank you to my buddy Mike for teaching me how to troubleshoot that relay. And then, uh, I thought about it all last night when I should have been sleeping and uh, came up with this other possibility. Got here this morning, went hunting for for bad fuses and stuff, and sure enough, I found those two unmarked ones. Oh, the five amp one is for the control panel on your dash. I've, I've come, because when you pull that out, it kills power to the control panel. So just remember that too. I'm gonna write that down. I don't know why they gotta put unmarked fuses in the fuse box. It just caused me a lot of problems, but like I said, Freightliner would have figured this out way faster than me, but who the hell knows how much it would have cost. I'm going to get ready to put all this together here. Let me pause for a second, and I'll show you about this here, uh, what we're going to do there. All right, guys. So this little fresh air filter here. I went to the hardware store and bought this 99-cent furnace filter. Took the old filter out of here. Kind of cut around it just made a new one this was 99 cents and i can get about three filters worth out of this so no need to spend any more than that so let's see here we're ready to put this back together you already saw me do it once so i'm not going to waste your time and show you again everything just comes together the opposite of taking it apart some of that you already saw the fan does work I already tested it and then uh, I'll come back here in a, in a few minutes and, and show you how to reset this system this computer on here oh what I determined that happened likely the motor went out blew the fuse took out the relay whatever so that's a good sign we know it is in fact a bad motor and I tested it and it's not it's junk but I'm not gonna try to use it again because I'll just blow my relay or fuse again so I just wanted to share that with you that that's likely what happened here. All right, so here's how you reset them, uh, that HVAC control. You gotta have the key on, this button all the way to the left, these two all the way to the right. You gotta simultaneously push these two buttons in here. You'll see them start flashing. Okay, see them flashing? It's gonna cycle through the blower motor, put it through a full cycle, Test all the parameters. When it's done, it'll shut off and you can shut the truck off. So we'll just watch a second for it here to go through all its uh, checks. There we go. It's complete and you can turn the key off now. I like to turn the key off before I restart the truck. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. There'll be plenty more videos like this.